All right, I just finished up with a live with Tish Winters over at the Artist Haven, and I got a bunch of colors left over, and I've got some glitter left over from another project. So we're gonna combine it in a new mold. Okay, I'm not gonna show the mold. It's secret. You gotta, you gotta wait. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so you know me, I gotta use my leftover resin up, get more bang for my buck on my resin, cause you know, it's expensive and I'm, I mixed way too much of it. Oh well. Anyway, I got these new molds. Okay, you, you guys know already that my family uh, and I play Dungeons and Dragons, and we also play with magic cards, and it works with a lot of those um, different dice where you can get the triangular dice, or what they call D12s and D10s and things like that. And, okay, like your typical dice is six-sided, and they're called D6s. Now you're understanding six-sided dice. Well, a lot of times you'll have a set of dice. And what this is, it's a little carrier for your dice. So it creates a little pocket here that your uh, dice will fit into. So this area here will be solid, and obviously this will be a little cavity. So you can carry around your favorite dice for playing Dungeons and Dragons. And then this is a lid for it. And it's got a little spot in here that you can drop in little magnets when your piece is done. So I am super excited. As you can tell, there's already a little bit of color on there. And yeah, I, I kind of gave them a test drive because I couldn't stand it. I had to, had to do something with it. But I wanted to make up so, another one so I can give it to my son for a goodie, but isn't that cool? That is so cool. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm kind of doing this on the fly here. I'm gonna end up making up a dirty pour cup, but for right now, let's work up some of this extra clear that I've got and get this ready. I should probably get some sticks here. So I'm using my normal stone coat art coat resin, um, which has got a huge working time. And of course, as always, I push it to the max. Um, Glitter is kind of fun with resin because you don't actually need to worry about the 10% thing because it doesn't really mix into it. Uh, meaning it doesn't uh, become part of the resin. It's kind of like floating within the resin. So you can really mix it up very thick if you wanted to. Um, and I usually do. However, I've got some really fine stuff in here. Normally what I do with, with glitter is I do the reverse. I pour the glitter into the resin. But since I had this leftover already like this, I'm kind of doing it in reverse. And I'm just going to add resin until I get to the consistency that I want it. Think of it as like... Um, taking nuts and mixing them into, let's say a syrup for now. And if you've got them really coarsely chopped nuts, you still see the nuts around, right? So it doesn't really color the syrup. Now, if you ground up those nuts, or like, you know, in a coffee grinder kind of grinder, kind of thing, it'll actually change the color of your syrup. Well, let's just say a golden clear syrup. So that's what we're dealing with. It's more of like a, a chopped nuts thing. So it's not really changing the color of the resin, but resin is helping it move, move and flow. I'm gonna do a little bit more because I gotta pour this into a dirty pour cup. So I want it to be a little bit more fluid than that. There we go. Okay, there's that. All right, this one I'm gonna do reverse. I'm going to add, this is some uh, chameleon colors. 
This is a Dalmatian Obsession, I believe. I think that's enough, yeah. Very sparkly, as you can tell by my fingers. And I'm off camera, sorry. This stuff goes in the air super, super easy. I don't usually mix colors in my videos. Because it does, it can take some time. But well, sometimes it's good to see how other people do it, right? And I'm always scraping the sides and also getting the flat end of the popsicle stick and scraping that on the sides, especially when working with pastes, because as that solution is so thick that you can end up with a pure color on your stick and it's not incorporated into the resin. All right, so that is ready. And I think I got one more clear. So, hmm, what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. I don't know. Hmm. You know, I got deep greens. I, I know what I'm going to do. Hang on. Okay. This is going to have a whole bunch of glitter in it. It's going to be a big sparkly mess. All right, this time I'm going to pour half of this into another cup. Let's see. Maybe a little bit more. And then this is a new color from uh, uh, Color Passion. No. Yes, it is color question. But uh, it's called Mermaid Dreams. And I don't know if you're catching this, but it kind of shifts from purple to a blue. So it's very chameleon-like in itself. So since I've got a lot of purple green colors, and this is how I usually apply glitter, is I pour it straight into the cup. Oh, that's fun. That's a whole mess of fun. Let's see if I can get it kind of thick on thin on this. That's cool. Ooh, I'm gonna like this one a lot. Sometimes I get all mixed up between color passion and color obsession. <laughs> the names are so similar. All right, I still have clear left over. You know what, I'm gonna leave it clear. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, here's my dirty cup, or to be dirty cup. All right, let me get my colors. I always get my colors lined up and how I'm gonna pour them. It's just something that helps me out a bit. Let's see. All right, so here's the color that I got going on. I'm trying to be careful with my phone. I had a bit of catastrophe this morning. I'll tell you about that. So this is a, an indigo co color. I'll put pictures at the end of this video so you know what colors I'm using. So I'm going to kind of pour in this kind of an order here. And then I got it going on here like so. So I know what order to put it into the cup. But what I think I'm also going to do is, hmm, I'm wondering about pouring the entire contents into the cup because I know the glitters are going to push down into the solution. 
the less I manipulate the dirty pour going into the mold, the better and the better results. And this one is a copper color and I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. So that's gonna be a, like a last minute on the fly thing. But I think I will put a layer of clear in there. In fact, I might start off with clear. Let's do it this direction. This is my iffy. So we'll start off with a clear and kind of go in this order. Yeah, like that. Okay, now that I make complete sense, let's get started. Okay, so I had a fun moment with Tish this morning. She uses a stream yarn to do her lives and you just check in with your phone on that one and put your earbuds in and that's how we get the audio in. Well, I'm in the process of mixing up my resin and my earbud slides out of my ear. And of course, keep in mind, I've got sticky fingers already because I'm doing the resin up and I can't do anything about it. And it's like crud and it goes plop right into the resin. So, you know, that earbud is toast. And fortunately, it's the wired ones and not the my nice earbuds because <laughs> that would be so sad. Okay, I end up deciding to pour half of it into there. It might be a little bit more than half. But that way it's a good healthy amount. This one's super thick, so it's gonna push all the way down. Blob. That one there, I'm not gonna have a picture of that one because it was a mixture from uh, another project I worked on where I had multiple glitters making that one up. This mint is pretty color. So I'm doing a series with Tish where uh, one week she teaches me acrylic pouring and then the other week I teach her resin. And I've been breaking down techniques and that's how I teach. It's just the techniques and that way people can put them together, you know, how they like to do it. And uh, today we are working with creating cells with um, color passion. All right, I'll put quite a bit of this lovely madness in here. I shouldn't say lovely madness, it's just gorgeous. Feel like I dropped a mermaid tail in here pretty much. Ah! Come on. Try not to get in the way of the camera while I'm pouring. It's just about impossible. Oh, I'm pretty much covering the camera anyway. All right, so that's my gorgeous mess. And I think I'm gonna end it with a bit of white. I did not add any clear. Okay, here's your clear. I'm gonna put the clear in there. Oh, I did put clear in the very beginning, that's right. All right, so I'll do a little clear and end it with a little white. Don't need a lot, just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move these colors to the side and then we're gonna pour in the, my molds. All right. So what I do with my molds when I'm doing dirty pours is two different things. Either one, I move and do a lot of like, a, kind of like a tree ring pour. Uh, which basically means that you're pouring in a circular motion. Or two, I just kind of just very gently move it from one end to the other end and let the resin flow out as it wants to. Now, 
with acrylic pouring, you can do the quick little circles. But with resin, the solution's much thicker. So if I'm doing circles, I'm moving much slower. Okay, and you won't, the lines are different between the two. Let me just show you. This is gonna be pretty. So what I think I'm gonna do is just be as still as possible and just slowly move it over. Because I've already poured a lot of lines in here. It's just messing with the layers. I'm going to go slowly back over top. And the reason why I didn't finish it off is I want these two pieces to have some kind of cohesiveness to them. So even if I pour the remainder of the resin into this cup, it makes sense. All right, I'm gonna slowly stop here. Oh, my tummy's growling. I like disappeared out to the studio real quick to do Tish's live and I haven't had my breakfast yet. All right, so I'm gonna bring in the colors that are already starting to happen at the bottom of the cup. And I'm not moving, I'm just letting them spread out on Alright, so this one is done. Hopefully I didn't pour too much. I did. Good. Oh, crack -a -poo -poo. <laughs> Oops. Hang on, let me get a spoon. Now you know it's a winning combination of colors when the cup looks like this. Like this is just the bottom of the dirty pour cup. Sweet. I had a little bit extra and I put it into my heart mold. Now this was the end of the cup, but I got a lot of great depth in this. All the different glitters and interference. There's even a little bit of chameleon in there. It turned out really pretty. A lot of subtle, a lot of subtle pretty. And here's the back. A whole mess of fun. Okay, so here are the two molds. <laughs> one's gonna be really easy to pull out. The other one's gonna be a bit of a challenge. I may or may not do that on camera. Depends on how much I grunt. <laughs> Pulling it out. Okay, so here's, this is the lid. So it's got lots of less uh, pieces that go into the area, see how this one has all these little um, honeycomb-like shapes? So it takes a little bit of muscle to get it out. So basically, what I end up doing is trying to loosen up the sides before I start moving down. And then you try to loosen up the side on the inside too, just to get some air in there and it makes it a little easier to pull out. Now, there is a thing about putting dishwasher soap in here that I heard recently. That I may or may not use for this one, I'm not sure. At some point. 
All right, I got my determined face on. Come on. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. I had a feeling this one would turn out really cool. So this little bump here, if you can see it right there, it's most likely a little glitter bump, to be honest with you. Maybe, yeah, it feels like a little bit of a, a bubble that was coming up to the surface. But overall, wow. And that's the inside of the lid. That turned out awesome. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do with this guy is I will let it cure for a couple days flat on some parchment paper, or if I'm worried like I've opened the mold up too soon, um, I'll flip over my silicone mold so it's nice and shiny, and I'll make sure that it's nice and flat. Now, the part that's critical on the flat part is it this, excuse me, is it this side or is it this side? And it's actually this top part because of the way this fits together with the bottom. So keep that in mind if you're doing that. And then I always put just a little bit of pressure and then put that to the side for a couple days. But we can have the immediate ooh for right now. So of course we always gotta go diving in. It's like, ooh, how'd it look, how'd it look? It's like one of the first things I do in the morning is like go to see how the artwork turned out. If you can only see my face right now. No, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> so I'm doing this on New Year's Day. So it's a little bit late in the morning <laughs> than I would normally come out to check my molds. But it's New Year's Day. We stayed up late. Okay, I'm going to keep wrestling with this. I'll come right back. So I wanted to throw a little tip in there for you. Um, when working with silicone molds, because there are a substance that attracts like dust and debris super easy. Um, I'm pulling hairs off of it all the time. Really, <laughs> it doesn't take long for that, uh, that stuff to start sticking. And to keep it nice and shiny, what I do when I store them is I store them so that way they're touching another surface. In other words, um, uh, the area that I want to keep clean uh, face down. And that's how I normally store them. And I put them on a tray like this too. So they're ready to go at a moment's notice. But that way the inside is always nice and covered up. So just a little tip. Later. Okay. I got it out. <laughs> that was definitely a wrestle match. So the more you have surfaces that hold on to the resin, the trickier it is to pull this out. So yeah, it, it, it held on really good. <laughs> so are you ready? I mean, wow. Let's see if it will focus on it. That was a whole mess of fun. That looks really, really pretty. And this is the back. So what I'm gonna do on this guy, since this is the base of it, uh, I'm just gonna take um, a sanding bit and I'm gonna kinda go at a 45 degree angle just to take off this edge because what this edge does is it curls up the side of the mold just a little bit. So basically this edge here can be kind of on the sharp side. So we don't want anything we create to hurt anybody. Definitely. Now I try to get the lids and it's tricky, but I try to get the edge to dome over. And the way you do that with a mold is when you fill it up, you fill it up all the way to the top and you hope you get just enough where it stays, um, just a hair over the top part and it will naturally dome. Like this area here has domed over nicely so it's almost a rounded edge to it. Whereas this edge is 
let's see, there was one edge. This edge here kind of, it does a little bit of a slight up. So I'm gonna just take off this edge just a little bit and I think that'll be fine. But it does have this little bump here, so I'm actually debating on doming a clear coat on top of this. But these two will fit nicely together. And all I gotta do is put magnets in here and it'll actually click into place. So, yeah. If you wanted these colors to work a little bit better together, uh, as far as being more matchy, then probably uh, reduce down the amount of colors you have when you go to pour. So there's a lot more blue around. In other words, one of them being very dominant. Whereas I had, I think the blue and the green and the lighter green, almost equal, almost. So that's why you got a lot of blue in the bottom and, and this. Or, or probably the best way to do it is when you're layering up your dirty pour cup, repeat your pattern like two or three times. And that way there's even disbursement through the top and the bottom. But to be honest with you, I don't mind them being two different colors because all the colors coordinate and they work well together. So, and you got the wow factor on the end. This is like a little geode. You open it up and all the sparkly bits are on the inside. <laughs> I couldn't be thr more thrilled. All right, there you go. All right, you guys know what to do by now. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. But definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up, check the links in the description below for any products that I use, as well as links to my Etsy store. Go shopping. Seriously, check it out. <laughs> Later, y'all.